Hello everyone, this is Marianne and welcome back to my channel for another video. Now in this video I thought I'd talk about how I plan and I have made a video about exactly this topic and I rewatched that video recently and I have also rewatched a few of my earlier videos just to remind myself what I have talked about already and what I have not and also to remind myself what I have been doing before that I am no longer doing now or what I, I was doing before but I am continuing to do now or what I have not done before but I do now. So if you want to watch that video, I will link it down below but you absolutely don't have to watch it first before you can get um, the context of this video because this video can be watched completely independent of all the others but of course if you're interested you're free to watch that as well now same as that previous video I mentioned that 98% of the planning gets done on the daily pages and it's still true now 98% of my planning still happens on these daily pages and uh, these daily pages are are uh, sort of like highly stylized to my own specific needs and I have not been using these exact same pages before but I was using the same system even before now I have also made a video about the evolution of my planner pages and I will link it down below just in case you're interested to watch that but these are the pages that I used to plan now these are day on two pages and the tracking is on the left side and the planning is on the um, right side. I fill in the tracking information after the fact and of course planning is done before everything happens. That's why it's planning. And tracking is done on the left page of the spread and planning is done on the right page of the spread. Now what do I track in the first place? I also have a separate video about this which I will link down below but you don't have to watch that because that has changed a little bit but now I track the following for instance um, there is a birthday on here that's my uncle and it's also New Year's Day so it's a holiday and I also track what I have written for the day because I am a writer I write fiction I also I, I already have a couple of books published and I also am a graduate student under the program comparative literature and my major is literary theory so anything that I write um, for either fiction or for my for my graduate studies get written on there because I want to be able to know what exactly have I worked on on any given day and then up here is a tracking box where I write the title of the book that I have read for the day whether if it's for school or if it's for personal and here is a tracking box in which I write down what uh, station and episode I watched for the day I I listened to I used to listen to a lot of podcasts before like I think it was last year I listened to a lot of radio lab it's very very interesting and also serial I was on serial in 2015 and then when Bob Ruff came up with his own podcast on serial I was on that too and then there was a serial on serial so I listened to a lot of those before and I also listen to a lot of uh, love and radio so those are the stations that I listen to um, in terms of podcast but I haven't been able to listen to that recently although I do want to I get a lot of ideas from podcasts especially from radio lab ideas about what to write or what's going on in science and technology and they make it so interesting so I highly recommend it if you haven't subscribed to Radiolab yet I suggest you uh, subscribe to them now and then up here is a larger box for for writing down what YouTube channels or topics I have watched for the day because YouTube as you know 
is my little universe and I want to know what people are up to, what people are talking about so I can, you know, weigh in, comment on them or ask them things or think about how I can contribute to the discourse. Um, so that tracking box is for that. And then here is a tracking box for what TV show I have watched for the day. And then this is for what movie I watch for the day. And here is to put in what skincare I have used for the day. This is not my daily skincare. This is not my morning routine and evening routine. No, these are the twice weekly, three times weekly or once a week treatments like the sheet masks and the clay masks and the facials. And then up here, I write down, um, this is for hormone tracking. This is because I have, I have an irregular period. I'm sorry, this is TMI. I write it down there. And if you can see, sometimes in my flip through videos that flower is colored in, that's when I think, I think I'm getting a hot flash. Now I have been arguing with my, <laughs> my uh, gynecologist um, telling her that I am premenopausal, but she said, no, you're too young. But I'm, I'm not even sure if they're hot flashes now. Hmm, I'm, not, I'm no longer sure, maybe they're not. But anyway, if you see this flower colored in, that's what it means. And then here is to track my steps for the day. I wear the um, Apple Watch, so it tracks my steps. And even before that, I was on the Pebble, so I track my steps on there too. I write it down here. And I also write down here if I did any exercise for the day, like if I went on the treadmill for half an hour or the elliptical machine or something. So that's what I do. That's what I track. And then over here is tracking for what my son has been up to for the day because his schedule is different from day to day. And sometimes he has meetings with his group mates or classmates after the the regular classes and sometimes on weekends they have projects to work on together. Sometimes they do the projects in the house of my parents where he lives, sometimes in another house that's just nearby. So I really just wanted, I just wanted to keep track of what he is up to. But that's really just the extent of what he's up to. He's only just 17. Um, his, his activities are limited to school activities. And then here is for Jawaid, uh, what he's been up to for the day, if he, if he cooked anything new. And here is a little countdown of how many days we have to wait before he can come back for good, which is um, May 2018. But now I think it can become earlier. I don't know. Let's see. And then here is the tracking for what people in my parents' house have been up to because that's also where I live when I am in the province, when I'm not in Metro Manila. This is where I live and I want to know what the people are up to, like if my father is traveling from this town to this town or if my mother is traveling from Naga to Manila and how many days is she in Manila. So I write it down there. That's really for tracking and then here is for what I ate during the day um, I the problem with with my uh, meals is that I don't take meals regularly because sometimes I forget no not sometimes I forget a lot and I even had to start putting alarms on my watch just to remind me that hey it's lunchtime or hey it's time for dinner otherwise I will forget but sometimes when it's time for lunch and I have lunch, I'm not yet hungry, so I don't eat the regular lunch, which is usually rice and one or two viands. Sometimes I eat just a sandwich. So sometimes even when it's not yet time for dinner, I'm already hungry and I forget like, why am I already hungry? It's not even dinner time yet. So sometimes I look back, oh, okay, this is why all I had for lunch is just a sandwich so that's why I am hungry you know just to keep track of things and over here is um, I put here the number of milliliters of fluids that I had for the day I track it in my Apple watch it's an actual app that you download on your iPhone and then it has its own complication right here and you just um, add um, whatever you had like you can choose if it's 
juice or tea or water or a smoothie or whatever. Um, I haven't tracked anything yet, although I had only um, I had only a glass of iced tea for today um, as of now. So that's what I have to put into this particular app after I'm done making the video. So, and over here I track my weight because I am trying hard to lose weight, but I'm not very good at it. But it's there <laughs> just to remind me that that is a goal. And then I I have here um, heart rate and blood pressure. And over here I track um, how I'm feeling about my legs because I'm currently under treatment for chronic venous insufficiency. That really just means varicose veins. Um, they're quite aggressive and the doctor wants me to track how I'm feeling on any particular day. And I've already had two different sclerotherapies um, a year apart and I'm due for a third, although we have not yet decided on exactly when because I cannot travel for two weeks after the procedure. So, but, but I keep traveling so it cannot be done. So I have to schedule my travel and then schedule the sclerotherapy for two weeks before that. So this is what it's for. Um, and even after my sclerotherapy, I still have to track what I'm feeling in my legs every day. And over here is just medication. And over here is what funds that I have allocated for the day as spendable. This box is also where I write down how many, how much money I have left till the next payday. How much money I am allowing myself to spend until the next payday at work. Now, um, I don't live from payday to payday because I have other sources of income, but um, for my um, daily needs for bills and food and transportation, I rely exclusively on my income from my day job and I don't allocate the entire income for the uh, daily expenditures. I just specify how much money I'm allowing my, myself to spend. So that's why that's there. And here is where I track all the things that I have spent for. And here's a list of things that I want to keep track of about myself. Like, um, I, I don't, I, I don't shampoo every day. <laughs> um, sometimes I shampoo after, after two days or after three days. It depends on the condition of my hair. And I don't use, um, one shampoo every single time. It's different. And sometimes I shampoo my hair but I don't have a body bath or sometimes vice versa. But I want to just keep track of those things. And the last three items here, the last three items are habits that I want to um, start having, like the morning routine. I want to be able to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and write for an hour um, and then get ready for work at 6.30. And then the next habit that I want to form is to walk five minutes to work and then walk another five minutes back home after work. Um, I don't want to have to keep riding an Uber. Um, I want to be able to walk when the weather is good and if my bag isn't too heavy, if my backpack isn't too heavy because that's additional exercise on certain stretches of days when I can't get any exercise. And then the last habit that I want to have is to floss. I hate flossing. I super hate doing it. Um, but my, my dentist says it's important. And if I hate it so much, I don't have to do it every single day. Like I don't have to do it every single morning and every single night. I can just do it like every morning or every night or every other day. Um, as long as I do it. It doesn't have to be every day. So I want to keep track of when I did it last because if I can see like if it's been three days that I haven't marked it as done yet, then I have have to do it. And then over here is for the um, detox that I am doing. So I'm marking it down. So that's all the things that I track in these boxes. 
and you are already familiar with the Hyperdex. I have talked about this um, a bunch of times before. I use, I use the Hyperdex for tracking how I used my 24 hours in a day and where I used my 24 hours in a day and who I was with. So just to give you an idea, I will show you a finished Hyperdex. Like for instance, on November 1, <laughs> this was this was Todos Los Santos and I have a blog about it. I didn't do anything much. I was on vacation. I was not even in Metro Manila. I was in fact in my parents house until 10 30 in the morning and then we left and then we arrived at the mausoleum at 11 30 in the morning until three o'clock and then at four o'clock i was at the eternal garden which i also showed in that vlog until six o'clock and then at 6 30 i was with i was with my son in a mall because he wanted to get some donuts so we drove over there and got the donuts and then it was a longer drive home because some of the roads were one way. Some of the roads that were usually two way were closed to um, two way traffic. They were open only to one way traffic. So we had to go around and around and around. And traffic was so heavy around because people were, you know, going in and out of the cemetery. So it took us an hour to get home. We got home at eight and then I fell asleep at nine o'clock. Um, and then also on the same day, I fell asleep at 3 a.m. and then I woke up at 9. You know, it's just things like that. But this is a holiday. So let us have a look at what a Hyperdex looks like if it's not a holiday. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, this is a very interesting day. So on this day, I was in the dorm until 10 o'clock in the afternoon. I was late and it's my first day of being late for the month of November. Um, I was late because I fell asleep at one o'clock and I woke up at eight and I said, mm, I'm already late. I might as well, you know, stay in the dorm or stay in bed a little bit more. So that's what I did. And then I got to the office at 1030. And then on this day at around three o'clock in the afternoon, it was announced that we are going to be on a work suspension from November 8 until November 15. So from there, it was a mad scramble to, you know, um, talk to people, see who is going to be, see which deadlines can be moved up or moved down or what needs to be absolutely finished on this day so that we won't be late for the deadline that falls within November 8 and November 15. So it was so crazy. Everything was work. I just had a, a half an hour meeting here, but everything else was work. And then um, from four o'clock, I was, this is design work really. So I was, I was scrambling to finish a design. And then from 6.30 and all the way until 11, I was actually doing some reports, a bunch of reports, whose deadlines fell on November 15. Um, they, could, they could be moved to November 16, but even if they were moved to November 16, there is no way I could finish all of these reports because I thought I had all the time from November 7 until November 15 to finish, and now I had only November 7. So from 6.30 to 11, it was crazy. It was all reports. So this is a very interesting day. I finished with the reports at 11, and then I, I, I don't know, I hung out at work a little bit more, about an hour more, maybe just chatting with some of the people who are still left there. <laughs> and then I got to the dorm at midnight. And it was a holiday, no work. And then I was in the dorm, and then I went to school at one o'clock and then I was with a friend of mine for about an hour and then I left school at 5.30. You know, just an idea of how the Hyperdex is used. And I track my time. I prefer to track my time because I work in creatives and we do not have a very, very structured um, schedule 
I have hardly any meetings and meetings are few and far in between and if we do have meetings they only last for about 30 minutes because if you pull a creative person into a meeting that lasts for longer than half an hour they will start complaining and they will start you know slunking out and then pretending that they are sick so they have to go to the clinic because we really really hate meetings so my meetings are few and far in between so I don't have many timed schedules so in order for me not to ask myself at the end of the week or the month hey where did all my time go that's the reason why I track so that even if I look back I can see that my 24 hours are not really completely a waste of time so I was able to do something I was able to be with someone I was able to be somewhere so that's the reason why I track my time on the Hyperdex and that's also the reason why it's tracking it doesn't have to be tracking but I use it as tracking you can use it for planning um, my sister uses the Hyperdex to to um, sort of like experiment if she's managing her time well because she works in IT so the outer layer for her is to project like to project or to allot a particular time like I'm going to spend 7 a.m. until 12 working on this particular project and then the second layer she marks down for the time that she actually spent on the project sometimes she actually starts an hour later and finishes an hour earlier so that is that creates a historical data which she can use then to um, decide on future projects on how much time she can commit because she now has all of these um, historical information on what uh, on how she was able to manage her time in previous projects so that's one of another way of using the hyperdex for marking in my hyperdex I use these zig clean color real brush pens I have been using these only since about June of 2017 and I have been loving them ever since because they give my hyperdex that watercolor look <laughs> and um, I have a video about my color coding which I will link down below but that has changed since then if you want to watch that video I will link it down below but more or less these are still the colors that I use and I explained in that video how I put these little circle labels on there but for the most part the system is still the same but the colors are already different but so so you know I use the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens to mark in the fields in my Hyperdex. Okay, so that is all for the tracking side of my Day on Two Pages. Now let's go to the planning side of my Day on Two Pages. These are the boxes that pertains to the areas in my life that I have to plan for. Um, so here is a box for work. I have here the icon of my, of my company, the company that I work for. And then over here is the, num the hours that I have to be in the office and what time I'm allowed to go out. Now, um, for now, this is 8 to 5 p.m. But before, when I was on an adjusted work schedule, it, it's different. Sometimes it's 7 to 2 on certain days it is um, 11 to 7 at night so it changes so that's why this is there um, because uh, certain things change pertaining to that so I want to keep track of what time I actually have to be at work and what time I can actually leave the office without being tagged as having gone on under time so that's that and then I list down here all of the things that I have to do for work like for instance let's get hmm let's see yeah here 
here is Thursday. This is the first day of work after that very long weekend that I talked about. And I just really just make a box using black ink and then write down the task in black ink. And when the task is done, I take the green ink and then mark or color in the box and then cross out the task with green ink. Now, um, there are some items here that are written down completely in green ink instead of black. And I talked about that in a previous video and I am going to insert a clip from my video right here. And the purpose of, of that really is for me to know what things I have done for the day that were not planned but the task came up and I dealt with it anyway. So I really have only four different colors that I use in this um, planning area. For the planning, I use this. It has, well, this is really, this looks like black ink, but it's actually a very dark gray ink. It's diamine graphite. Hold on, let me show you how it looks. So it's a dark gray, it looks black. And I used to use the Noodler's um, Jivago, which is a very, very dark green that is almost black, which is actually, it's black Noodler's ink with a green tint. So it looks like a very, very dark green, almost black. And it's one of my favorite inks, but it takes a really long time to dry. And I find it so annoying that every time I have to write with that particular ink and then I have to flip the page, it smears. So I either have to wait for the ink to dry, which could take a minute or two, or take a piece of, this is not blotting paper, this is just ordinary paper. Take it and then put it in between the pages and flip the pages back so that I can write on the other page without the wet ink smearing all over here so that was kind of annoying and inconvenient so I just switched to the diamine graphite which dries much much faster and I really like the dark gray ink it, it looks a little bit special it's not your ordinary black but it looks close to black and then the next ink color that I use for my planning area is this green one like I mentioned earlier in this video I use green to mark the planned tasks that have already been done and also to write down tasks that were not planned but were done anyway in this pen I have J Urban Lear Sauvage and I will link down below a video that I made about my search for the perfect green ink and um, this was the ink that I have decided to use and then the next ink that I use in my planning area is the orange one. Right now I have the Diamine Blaze Orange in here and it's to mark down the tasks that were not done for the day but they were moved to a different day. And then this is the last color that I use for planning. Um, this has Lamy Pacific in it. It's turquoise. It's a bright blue turquoisey color. Um, and with this color, I mark the things that were planned, but turns out they were either canceled or no longer need to be done. So just to show you how these inks look, this is the diamine graphite that we have scribbled with earlier. And then here is J. Herbin Lear Sauvage. And then here is diamine blaze orange and then here is Lamy Pacific so four distinct ink colors that I use for my um, tracking area so now let's go back to the boxes like I said here is the box that I use for work and here is the box that I use for uh, personal tasks or things that pertain to me and my family and people who I have a very close relationship with because our lives are intertwined so what happens to them directly affects me so 
uh, I consider that as very personal so I write them all down here and then over here are tasks for my YouTube channel and for Etsy but I didn't put down here the um, Etsy logo because I only really deal with my Etsy store like once a year I list the the um, planner pages for the next year for the incoming year and um, people really just download um, the files from there every once in a while I get a custom order but that doesn't happen every day so the icon for Etsy is not here but if there is an Etsy task that comes up I write it down here um, because my Etsy is linked to my YouTube channel um, directly linked to my YouTube channel those are two topics that are um, closely intertwined so they go in this box and then over here is a smaller box for a, a project that I have I've been commissioned to do a book about um, something and it's going very very slow because all of the respondents are either out of the country or something and this one it's funny because we don't have a deadline <laughs> So people can just take their time. So sometimes I have a task on there, sometimes I don't. Sometimes some of the uh, post-it notes for my YouTube channel um, spill over to this box. And by the way, I also have a video about how I use post-it notes to plan my YouTube channel and I will link it down below. So just to show you, for instance, like this particular day, this was a Sunday, I, I was editing um, all of these videos I yeah I was editing all of these videos and um, they spilled over to the box for my um, commissioned work and over here is also a smaller box this pertains to my graduate studies it's not as big as the ones before because I'm already just working on my thesis now I no longer have classes I no longer have assignments and papers to submit for each class so this is really just me setting down what tasks I need to accomplish for the day in line with my thesis work so really those are the things that I plan and that is the content of my planning page on my day on two pages and I also have, these are the daily pages. I don't do weekly planning, but I do have a task sheet that is tipped in to the edge of every Sunday spread. And I use this not for weekly planning, but to list down all of the tasks that need to be done on that particular week. Like for instance, the heading here says, must be done on the week of 18 to 24 December 2017 and it's appended to the it's tipped in to the edge of the Sunday spread because all of my weeks start on a Monday so if there is a task that I have to do on that particular week but I'm not yet sure what exact day I can do them I just list everything down here like for instance I already have here upload 12 videos to YouTube and that is because I will be uh, away from my computer for about um, half a month because of the holidays I will be with my family and I don't want to have to um, be sitting in front of my computer to edit videos so I plan to upload 12 videos before I go on vacation um, and schedule the publishing of each video so I still don't know what what day I can actually upload the 12 videos but by the end of that week meaning by the 24th of December as long as this is done I'm happy so the reason why it's tipped in like that it's full it's tipped in and then it's folded out when I need it to, when I need to see it is because I want to be able to um, flip through all of the daily pages of my week while this one is visible so it just makes complete sense to me like while I'm flipping through 
my daily pages for this particular week and then I see a task that can possibly be done on let's say Wednesday I will write it down on Wednesday and then when it's done I cross it out here with green and then cross it out here with green as well so that is the function of the weekly task list that is tipped in to the edge of the Sunday spread and finally we have the side reminder tabs now I have also talked about this in a previous video and I will link it down below and these side reminder tabs are really for things that I have to do on this particular day that are out of the ordinary like um, even though as a creative uh, I, my days are never structured nevertheless I still am confined greatly to office and home so anything that takes me out of that um, routine has to be marked to remind me that there is something out of the ordinary that needs to be dealt with on any particular day like for instance here there is a bus icon and that is because I took the bus to Naga that night so it's also marked as green if you can see there is green there is a green dot here it's just written down with the um, this one J. Urban Lira Sauvage and I marked it as done so that is something that's out of the ordinary and then another thing that's out of the ordinary let's see if that happened hmm did this happen yes this happened so I must mark it down as with green I must mark this down with green now this is for when I had to see my doctor it happened because I was at Makati Medical Center on November 6 from 2 30 to 4 30 in the afternoon so something out of the ordinary because I don't see my doctors every day and it takes me out of the office and takes me out of my dorm here is a tab for school this also happened so I can mark it as done with green ink and this is the icon for my school because we have the oblation statue in the campus so that's the symbol that I use to mark school and I was in school from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 5 30 in the afternoon so that's done so more or less you get the point a calculator is for when I have to pay for something and then the footsteps is for when I have to go on an errand someplace I have to go there and then the um, little mirror is for a self-care appointment you know things like that now I have here an envelope containing all of the side reminder tabs that I will be needing and this is for <laughs> this is for days that I have earmarked for just lying around in bed doing nothing it's important and here is a tab that I use to remind myself that I have to exercise on that day and it's important enough to become a, a side reminder tab because the gym at my dorm closes at 8 o'clock in the evening so it means that on days when I have to go to the gym I must be at the dorm on or before 6 30 because I have to change into my gym clothes and then be at the gym before 7 and then be out of the gym before 8 and here is for um, self-care things like if I have to get a hair treatment or a facial or the laser hair removal thingy and then for school days for road trips and then if I have to meet with people out of the office and out of the dorm here is for bus rides, doctor's appointments, um, days when I have to go places, and so on and so forth. This is for days when I have to go somewhere to pay. Like all of my bills for myself are already auto debited 
from my card but sometimes when I make a purchase I have to go to a particular bank to pay for them so there's that and then dentists and this is for when I have to do a task for my um, commissioned work and what else do I have here this is for days when I have to swim laps now I also have a lap pool in my dorm but I hardly ever use it because the water is too cold but just in case I want to start swimming regularly again there's a tab for that and that's basically it those are all of the things that take me away from my natural habitat which is my dorm room and my office and I just keep them all inside this small envelope that is exactly personal size. I made this myself. I have punched holes in it to put on the rings. But right now they're out of the rings because my planner is too chunky. Now what do I do when I make a mistake? I have here some rejects <laughs> from when I was printing my daily pages and then I made a mistake. Like I fed the paper wrong so it overprinted, like double printed. So I just take that and then I put them on here and then when I make a mistake I just cut out a piece of paper and then paste it over the mistake. Um, so that kind of works. It sounds a little bit tedious and it sounds like a bit of a hassle but I'm not bothered by it at all. I prefer to cover up my mistakes properly and completely because I want to be able to look back on older archives and see information clearly and I do that a lot I go back to my archives a lot so clearing up mistakes is important to me I also have a summary sheet that is tipped into the edge of the Monday spread and it really is just a summary of all the numbers that pertain to my time or my hours and my finances so for instance the items right here are pertaining to the hours that I spent doing what so I can just um, pick out all of the colors that I have um, shaded in on my hyperdex and then count them one by one and I put down there the number of hours I spent writing, number of hours I spent swimming, which is usually zero, and then hours of other exercise, which is usually 1.5 hours a week, um, sometimes zero, and then the number of steps, and the number of milliliters of fluids taken, hours spent doing personal reading, and so on and so forth. But you kind of get the idea so that I am accountable for the hours that I spend doing anything. Um, this allows me to know exactly where my time went so that I don't fall into the trap of the week ending and then wondering where did all my time go? Well, literally they went here. So I always have an answer to that question. And um, in this part right here, it's really just a summary of where my money went. These are the categories for transportation, food, for books, for personal and work, because I prefer to uh, buy books, even for work, at my own personal expense, using my own personal money so that I get to keep it. I don't charge that to the office or to my clients um, because I prefer to keep the books for myself. I am such a book nerd. I want to have so many books. I want to have all the books all to myself. <laughs> and then for self-care and toiletries and so on and so forth. So this is just a summary of where all my money went. And this last part here is a summary of where all of my money came from. So that's really just a summary sheet. And the benefit of this is that um, it it gives me a bigger picture of my finances and my time in order to allow me to strategize for bigger um, personal projects, especially for the finances part. Um, and sometimes when I need to, I don't do it every month, but when I need to, I take out from my archives 
I just fold out all of the um, month, oh, weekly summary sheets. I just fold them out like this for all of the weeks of the month. And then I just make a monthly summary of everything. I just tally all of the weekly summaries so that I can make the monthly summary. And it's easier compared with having to go through every single day just to find out what went down during that particular month. So it's useful for me. And that's it for my daily pages. This is where 98% of the planning gets done. And this is where the rest of the planning gets done. This is my monthly section. It just has these monthly pages. I did these myself. I printed this on Tomoe River paper and it's really just your basic monthly um, page. Very small boxes but I write very very small and I use this for forward planning. And the last one percent of the planning is done on my YouTube section right here. Now I have uploaded a video about how I plan for my YouTube channel and I do suggest that you watch that but it's really this section contains all of those things that I showed in that video there. Um, so I just write down here in post-it notes, color-coded post-it notes, all of the YouTube ideas that I that, that, that I come across or that I think of doing. And then F is for film, E is for edit, UL is for upload, and this is just the title of the um, uh, video that I am going to be uploading. And then uh, for better context, I suggest you watch that plan with me for my YouTube video that I will link down below. That video is really like a how I plan for my YouTube channel and also a plan with me for my YouTube channel. And I suggest you watch it. I will put the link down below. I also have this one section here that is called to deal with. And this is really basically my brain dump. Everything that has to be dealt with and everything that I think of that I have to do that I don't know how to schedule or when to schedule and I don't even know if it's a task or anything. I just write everything down here. I use pen, I, I use this section for pen tests, ink tests. Um, this is Rodia paper and this is graph paper. I do sketches on here for layouts that I want to do. Um, some lists and then things that I need to buy. And this is the label for the book rings that I always use for my archives. And I showed the rings in a video about what makes my planning system easy to sustain. These are the same book rings that I showed there. And then just measurements of the shelves inside my closet in my dorm. And then a quote from Proust and then books to find. This has been on here for, I don't know, a year, but I haven't really found anything. And this is for, this is a receipt for a power bank that I purchased like 10 months ago, but I have to claim warranty for because it's no longer working. And so this is really how I plan. Um, I think I have given you more or less a clear idea of how I do things, what my process is in planning. And to summarize, we have talked about the daily pages, the planning on the right and the tracking on the left. We talked about the um, four different colored inks that I use for planning and then the tracking boxes, what I track and why and the hyperdex and what pens I use for my Hyperdex, the side reminder tabs that I have right here, the uh, tipped in weekly task sheet and the tipped in weekly summary sheet, how I patch up mistakes and then the monthly pages um, which I showed you right here and then I also told you about my YouTube section 
which is right here and then also the fold out which you are going to see in that video that I am referring to you about how I plan my YouTube channel and then my final um, section that I use every single day for planning which is this dump section and that is how I plan. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you were able to get some ideas from this video. If you have a question, leave a comment down below and I will get to it as soon as I can. And if you want to share with me some videos that you have in your channel or in your blog posts about how you plan, please share it with me in the comments below because I really am curious. I will get to viewing them or reading the blog posts as soon as I can. So that is my video for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!